While working in AutoCAD, there are many things that you need to be aware of. The status bar is a sort of billboard that displays information. It's a communication center for you. It's located at the bottom of the screen and stretches all the way across. That's down here. Starts on the left, goes all the way to the right. Each one of those icons and glyphs will give you information. It tells you what things are going on, what things aren't, and where you're at, etc. It's a communication center, a heads up display. We're just going to look at all these and very quickly go through them one at a time. On the left, it may seem kind of obvious what this is. These are your drawing coordinates. And if your tool tips are turned on, you can hover over any of these icons and it will give you the command name or the function name that it represents. As you move your cursor around, you'll see that those coordinates change. So it's telling you where you're at in your drawing. AutoCAD is based on a Cartesian coordinate system and it's called the World Coordinate System. And it just goes with an X and Y coordinate system and for AutoCAD LT and then AutoCAD has an XYZ. So it's constantly telling you where you're at. This will help you keep track of your position. If you need to determine the coordinates of an object in your drawing, you can place your crosshair there. For example, right here, that's where you are. As you move, you can get the coordinates for all of the endpoints for this rectangle. Very handy, very quick and easy to use. Next, you'll see the toggle status icons. We talked about these in a previous section where you can press your F1 keys, F2, F3, etc. to toggle some features off and on. Well, instead of using the function keys, you can also just click on these icons. When they're highlighted with this blue background color, that means they're turned on. When they're just gray, that means they're off. This first button here is for the infer constraints. This is only in AutoCAD. AutoCAD LT doesn't have them, but constraints will control your line work. It will keep things, as you can see here in the parametric tab in the ribbon, locked into position. It keeps them perpendicular, keeps them horizontal, parallel, etc. That turns it off and on. The next one is the snap mode. When that's turned on, you can see AutoCAD will snap to your grid settings. Now those are going to depend on your exact settings and how big they are. The spacing right now is 0.5 units for X and Y. So every half of a unit, I'm snapping into position. If I draw a line, you can see I'm snapping to these points on my grid. Now this is a nice tool to use that will help you draw very accurately with little effort. But it also limits you to drawing on that grid. But if that's what you need to do, then that's a very easy way to draw. That's toggled off and on here. Next one is the grid. You see the grid background here is on right now. I can toggle that off so that it's just a gray background. A lot of times it can be distracting for people, and other times it can be very useful. It's up to you. The next icon is ortho mode. We pressed F8 to toggle that off and on, or you can just click it off and on here. The next one is polar tracking, and then O snaps, or your object snaps, by pressing F3 or clicking here, 3D O snaps in AutoCAD, your O snap tracking. Typically, I will leave this on because I find the tool O snap tracking to be very useful. And all of these, again, we're going to go into greater detail much later on. This one is your dynamic UCS. The dynamic UCS is used in 3D modeling in AutoCAD, but not in AutoCAD LT. It allows you to dynamically or automatically switch your coordinate system to match the face of an object you've picked. The next one is your dynamic input. The dynamic input is where your crosshairs will display a sort of mini command line function. Now I have it turned off. Now I have it turned on. I like this on because typically I need to know what's going on where I'm drawing at. That makes it useful. I don't have to look in two different places to get the information that I need. So I like to use it. Other users find the extra text and prompts inconvenient and in cluttering the drawing. So that's up to you. I suggest you use it or at least give it a try, but it's up to you. This option will 
show your line weight. We'll talk about it later, but that has to do with printing. What's it going to look like when you print? How thick are your lines going to be? Well, this will give you an indication on the screen if you have something set up to be a thicker line. This is with the transparency setting. Again, another function we'll talk about later, but you can make objects transparent, translucent, opaque, and you can see through them, especially in a hatch that works quite well. So if I have this solid, it's at full transparency, meaning it's set to zero, meaning it has no transparency at all. It's full solidness. But as I increase the transparency up to a factor of 90, you can see it kind of fades, and I can see things through it. And if I draw a line through this hatch area, I can see it. Now I can turn that transparency off or on by toggling the switch here, or the button. Any object that has transparency assigned to it will be transparent. The next button is a quick properties. Now, if you press control one, it opens up your properties palette. That gives a lot of information on your object. Sometimes you don't need all of that information. But if I pick something, I get my quick properties palette. It's a properties palette for that object. It just gives you a basic three or four line bit of information. Typically, most of what you're going to need. I can change the color of the object right here. I can change the layer. I can change the line type to whatever I need it to be right here on the fly. And I can close this or I can press escape to let go of the object. Each one of these looks a little bit different because it will depend on which type of object you select. And if you pick more than one, then it will only display the properties that they have in common. Lines and circles are two different types of objects, so it will display different things. Some people find this useful, and again, other people like to turn it off. It's up to you. I prefer to turn it off because I typically keep my properties palette open all of the time while I'm working. So the quick properties just gets in my way. But if you're not that type of a worker, then it will probably be very useful. Next is the selection cycling. This can be very useful. As I go to pick something that's on top of something else, I may find this little glyph. You see that little blue box? It's hard to see, but it's showing up. That means there's more than one object here on top of each other. I, right here at this intersection, I have this red phantom line, this white continuous line, and the hatch pattern. AutoCAD doesn't really know which one I want, so it will pick whatever's on top. That's according to the draw order. And again, we'll get more detail into that. But if I don't know what to pick, you know, and it's on the bottom, I can't pick it, that's where selection cycling can come in handy. So I left click, and AutoCAD tells me there's a red line, there's a white polyline, and there's a white hatch. Which one of these do I want to pick? I select hatch, and now I can delete it or whatever it is that I wish to do to it. So that's very useful, especially in a very busy or complex drawing where you have things over the top of each other getting in the way. So in, if I undo this, and let's say I want to edit not the polyline, but the hatch pattern. Well, how do I do that? Well, if I pick with my selection cycling, polyline is on top. So that's what I would have picked if I had that turned off. So let's turn that off real quick. Now if I come here to pick, I'm getting just the polyline. It's a bear. How do I get this hatch pattern? It can be a pain. I don't want that. I want the hatch pattern. So selection cycling can be very useful and very helpful with that. Now this last button here, the annotation monitor. If I turn it on, turn it off, you can see that it adds something over here. Now this annotation monitor will let me know or will keep track of my different annotation scales. It'll do some other things too. We'll talk about those later on. But that's another toggle switch to turn that off and on. And annotation scaling has to do with text and dimensions specifically. That means that if you have text that has an annotation setting to it, it will automatically scale up or down depending on the scale of your drawing. So if you put your regular text in and you have a scale of that drawing at, let's say, a quarter inch to a foot, and then you have another drawing of that same thing with that same text and it's at one eighth of an inch to a foot, 
Well, you would have to scale the text or put in multiple text objects unless you use the annotation text. Then you tell the annotation text through AutoCAD settings that, hey, I have text here and, you know, scale up or down the annotation to whatever scale it is just to fit. And you define a paper size so that when you print it out, it's going to be, you know, three sixteenths of an inch high or whatever it is you want it to be. So that's a real nice feature. Now moving on here, we can toggle right here between model and paper space. Paper space, which we'll talk about here real soon, is where the magic happens. Model space is where your model is drawn, your 3D object. And this tells you where you're at. When you're in paper space, you can work in model space. And this is a quick toggle to get you in and out of there, just in case you need to. You can always go back to model space by clicking on these tabs here. Model space is where your line work goes. Paper space, or in the layout, is where your text, your title block, notes, etc., things like that need to go. These next two options are the quick view layouts and the quick view drawings. This gives you a quick thumbnail view of the layouts in your file, your current file, and it can allow you to quickly navigate to them. A quick view drawings shows you a list of all the files you have open, and then you can quickly get to all of their tabs. If you only have one file open, it doesn't really do you much good, and I only have two here right now. But as you can see, as I highlight one or the other, it shows me the different tabs that they have, and I can get to them very quickly. So those are some quick, cool navigation tools that you can use. And you can use it to get back to where you want to go. We'll look at these a little bit more closely later on. Next, you have the scale of your drawing. This is just the annotation or the visual scale for your drawing. Right now, it's currently set at 1 to 1, but I can set it at like a 1 to 40. And if I have different text or line work, as you can see in here, it will scale it up so that it visually appears at, to be at a different scale. It doesn't change the scale of your drawing. It doesn't enlarge or shrink your objects or anything. It just changes the visual scale for your file that you're currently working in. We'll talk more about that later. These next buttons will control the visibility of that. And then your workspace switching your toolbar locking positions, you can click this and you can lock them all into place or you can, you know, let's just let them go free. Let's have free range toolbars here. Let them go where they want or need to. And then you have hardware acceleration on and off and isolate objects. We'll show and talk about isolating objects later, but if I select and right click something for my default shortcut menu, I can isolate these objects one or two different ways. I can isolate just the object I've selected, or I can hide the object I've selected, and or I can turn all this off. So let's hide that circle. It's still there. It's not gone. But you can see here now, my light bulb is now red. It's saying, hey guys, something's happened here. There's some stuff that's hidden from view. You may want to address that before you go too crazy in your drawing. So if you end that, and it comes back, and it's good again. Then over here, this little button, it's the application status bar. I can turn these things on or off however I want, set up some of my tray setting objects, you can display the notifications that are going to pop up when you do a print. It'll say, hey, your print's done, so you can go over it. And if that's annoying to you, then you don't have to turn that on. And then here is your clean screen. Click that, cleans up your screen, gets rid of a lot of the gobbledygook that's on here that you may or may not need so that you can just draw in a larger area. There are two ways to get that on and off. You can just click the box again or press Control and Zero. And that puts everything back. So the status bar, as you can see, is a big deal. And a lot of times, most of the things on here are just there and you're not even looking at them. But it's a quick look to tell you what's on, what's off, how to interact with AutoCAD, turn things off and on, and get a quick idea of what's going on on certain aspects to your drawing. So it visually informs you of these things, which settings are on, which settings are off. And it gives you easy access and control to those settings and functions. 